How do you feel? How important do you feel it is for people in general, or specifically young men, to have some sort of a defined dream, goal, or objective to organize them and move them forward? Well, I started looking into the archetype of initiation uh, just a few years ago, maybe about three, four years ago, when I started to find myself going into what I call the tunnel. You yeah. know, and it's in this, when I met you, uh, when my brother and I came and visited you for the second time and we did painting, Yeah. Uh, you mentioned something about my painting. You interpreted it by saying it looks like something's being digested. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and I, I didn't get it at the time. I didn't know what you were talking about. I was just like, okay. But l literally that, that, those few days or the, those weeks surrounding that literally propelled me into a, a, uh, a tunnel experience is the way I like to describe it, where I've been going through a deep transmutation. And uh, so I, I became interested in, in, in uh, initiation. What is it for a young man to be initiated into manhood? And then I realized I was going into initiation into a different step, a different kind of manhood, a more evolved, a, a mature manhood. And uh, so anyway, in, that, in those studies, I, I learned that... Uh, our ancestors would have, through cross cultural, cross culturally, they would have two steps that were always necessary for initiation to take place. Number one is separation from the world of the mother. Yeah, and and then step two would be atonement with the father. And what I've learned is that it was essential not only for the boy to be, you know, removed from the society, removed from the mother, removed from a version of himself that he once knew, but introduced to all of the stories, all of the mythologies, all of the religion, all of the meaning that was critical for him to, uh, to believe in and to participate in. So that when he went back into life, went back into the world, he had instruction. He it really was, it was an opportunity for him to transcend himself and, and, and live for the bigger picture. Yeah. And so that was the, that was the, the mission. That was the goal. That was the dream was to be a, a part of the society, but also uh, being initiated into your role, your, your, your position, your, uh, your stance. So uh, I think that there was a lot of wisdom to our ancestors in this process. Yeah. And it's kind of a, it's been a loss because we don't have it any longer. But to answer your question, uh, I think it would be critical for us to go back to a time when we were given more meaning to our lives and, uh, and thereby having more of a mission to live by. Yeah. Two things come to mind. The, 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 you mentioned two key factors of initiation, removal from the mother atoning with the father the third is giving of yourself for the whole whether it be the tribe the culture the society but basically transcending the i needs and the i focus of the child to sacrificing oneself even if it means dying for the greater good uh, to protect the tribe or protect the uh, you know family in our in our culture but the the um, you know, most of these initiation rites for young men especially included uh, a lot of very interesting tactics to, uh, well, expose them to pain and to deep challenge. Some of them, you know, uh, ceremonies would be the tribe would line up, create a, a pathway, and they would, the adults would hold big sticks and the initiate would have to run through the path and get to the other end and they would try to beat that person to the edge of their life, not to <laughs> just, just enough, not to uh, permanently damage them, but enough that they really had to go beyond themselves to make the journey. And I've seen pictures where they're just crawling and getting beaten in, in the last few meters and they have to make that or they don't pass their trial. Uh, some of them would be given vision quests where they would be taken out to places like the edge of a cliff where there would be a rock circle and the uh, shaman would induce uh, a strong psychedelic and they would not be allowed to leave the circle uh, for as many days as it took until they had a vision for their life. 
and that you know can be as you can imagine you get a good dose of uh mushrooms or a psychedelic in you and and your world can change quite radically and you can be exposed to your unconscious quite heavily so they would have to stay in that circle and they'd have to pee in there poop in there and they generally just had water no food so there's certainly that giving of oneself and and one of the things that I've watched and as you know I too work with a lot of young men in my work I've seen that there's still a real problem in our culture for example being raised on a farm like I was there was no question you know you, my father uh, made the rules and you followed them or you entered that initiation all over again but there was a real sense of responsibility like i had to feed the animals and water the animals we all did before we got to eat it would be a very bad idea to show up at the breakfast table and for my father to find any animals untended to or or crops or whatever was going on but what i see today is that we have uh you know almost like the archetype is called the peri turnus are you familiar with that one no it means the eternal oh, child oh eternus peri turnus peri turnus yeah it means eternal boy or eternal child yes mhm mm it seems to me that we are really in an odd situation where a lot of our youth are still haven't uh let go of mommy daddy support haven't even though there might be 23 24 25 even 30 they're still using moms and dads credit cards whenever they get in trouble it's mommy and daddy bails them out i really see that there's a challenge with our young men stepping into their adult shoes and accepting adult responsibility um even on their own accord just because they can and it should it should be a natural uprising in us to individuate step away from mom and dad's control but i see almost like these extended puberties going on uh, i'm wondering if you've got any observations in that regard yeah uh i do and i'll use myself as an example uh you know i got married very early i got i got married and started having children at 24 And so I was uh thrust into the world with the with the weight to carry of raising a family. I was I was $90,000 in in uh in consumer debt after college and I still had college loans, I had Colleen's college loans and I decided I wanted to start my own business and it was almost like a self-initiation, but I don't think it would have I I would have been nearly as successful through it if I didn't have the pressure of being growing up very quickly. You had to be a I had to become a man, yeah. you know, at 20 at 24 years old. And I you know, I see the value in young people today taking their time and you know, exploring life and you know there are things that maybe I wasn't able to explore or to experience because I got married so early, but I became a man very quickly because I had the responsibilities that were associated with what a man had. And so what I often ad advise or uh, invite young people to do when they're uh, confused in this way is to do something that is that requires you to be responsible. Do something scary sometimes I say, you know, move out of your parents' house and live in your car. I made videos like this where you know people would have thought I was nuts, but it is it would be better to leave your mother's home and go live in your car go live on the road be homeless it's i think it's okay to be homeless especially in america it, 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 you really have food stamps you have food banks and most homeless people are are overweight there are a lot of homeless people that have more that eat more than you know than than people <laughs> who are living in homes um so going to the military is another one that's like kind of an initiation you know whether or not you agree with the american pol or foreign policy or not it's an opportunity like my nephew recently like uh, he's been having a hard time and you know he's 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 in his early 20s and his mom is a mom that's what moms are supposed to do but as a young man you got to get away from your mom yeah. and really the only option for him was to go into the military you know as much as he was resisting it so i think these things just taking on responsibility being 
when I got married and started having children, it's because I'm either courageous or crazy. But you got to do something courageous or crazy that forces you to man up. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I had my first son, Paul Jr., who's 39 now, two weeks after I turned 18. And <laughs> both, both of our parents were broke, Sue's and my parents. So I had – my ego was too big to collect welfare. So mm -hmm. – and having been raised on a farm and been exposed to uh, operating machines, welding, uh, mechanical work, uh, woodwork, I had a lot of general skills. And because we had contractors now and then come to the farm – I already knew I could do the work of a man. And as kids, we went and helped the local farmers. If a storm came and hay was getting rained on, we had to have an emergency hay party, you know, and get thousands of bales of hay out of the field real quick before it all goes moldy and you lose your hay for a whole season. So I, I learned early that I could work, you know, even at 12 years of age, I could outlift hay bales next to full grown men. And they would always look at all of my family, all of our kids, because my dad worked us like slave sled dogs, you know, and he's like, <laughs> they'd be like, Jesus, Murphy, these kids are strong. But so, yeah, there is there is that there. I, I know for myself, uh, my parents rule was you can only live in the house if you're in school. The day you quit school, you leave the house. Mm -hmm. And I hated school. I just it just <laughs> drove me nutty. I, I won't go into a long story about it, but so I left when I was 16. Uh, I only ended up with a ninth grade education. But the point I'm leading to is I had the urge to just completely get away from parental control. And it, it, it was like, I, I remember from as early as 12 years old, I cannot wait for the day I can leave and go do what I want to do and you know be myself in the world instead of constantly being controlled. And so mm -hmm. having lived that urge myself, it's very interesting for me to see so many young men and even women. I don't see it quite so much in the girls, but I do see it a lot in the young men, how they, it's almost as though they're comfortable just um, kind of having, uh, well, I don't even know if they consciously think it, but it's as though they're very comfortable staying i mean i i have i've had i had a client not too long ago that consulted me that was like 35 and still living with mom and yeah. and in the house and i see so much of that it's it's just interesting to me i i don't know what to attribute it to it could be lower testosterone levels due to all the estrogens in the food supply and all the medical drugs and things like that but i just uh find it very interesting but um it certainly does lead to some inner challenges I've noticed with young men. Uh, I think that there's a, I think that there's a, a an unconscious drive, something inside of us that lets us know the importance of individuation, the importance of moving on, the importance of contributing to something bigger than yourself. And I I see in a lot of the young men that consult with me. And of course, you know, many of them take my courses and right in the courses, we're breaking cases down, including many of them. And it, it, it seems that there's, I've observed that there's a fair bit of um, angst in them, um, a sense of urgency that they don't know what to do with, as though part of them knows they need to go out into the world and be a man, but the other part of them either doesn't know how or is afraid to, or is so comfortable with the support from mom and dad and whatever else that they can't seem to cross that threshold. Have you observed that at all? That, that sort of inner awareness, but not knowing how to deal with it. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with their way where, you know, there's so many factors. I recently re read a really good book called the, uh, the crisis of boys. I think it, I think it is that it goes, he goes through all of the different reasons why, men are suffering and why the suicide rate is out the off the roof and things of that nature but the way we're trained in school uh to to get everything right to do everything right not to mess up not to fail not to make any mistakes kind of gets people trapped in this paralysis of analysis whereby they're too afraid to take any risks yeah and so moving out of your mom's house it, 
is a risk. Starting a new a business is a risk. Yeah. Being with a woman is all risk. Yeah. So a lot of times these guys, because they're so tippy toeish about not making a mistake or doing the wrong thing, uh, they just end up not doing anything. 